What's going on everybody? Culture Dog, Sam Hatch, back with another video and uh, another review this time. This uh, film I just learned about recently, though it's a topic that, you know, deep down inside I was hoping eventually I'd be able to make this film, or at least write a book about it. Uh, I had uh, become obsessed with the, the story after reading about it in Empire Magazine back in, you know, I think 1996 or so, when the film that the, uh, the article referenced came out. And that film is The Island of Dr. Moreau, the 1996 remake of the classic H.G. Wells story. And it had been you know, made a few times in the film. And this you know, 90s version was this kind of passion piece of director Richard Stanley. And if you've ever seen the film, you may go, well, who's that? John Frankenheimer made that flick. And that's kind of where the uh, really fascinating saga of the story begins and uh, <laughs> spirals out of control. And I couldn't believe the stuff I was reading about. And then later I'd seen some interviews online with Richard Stanley. And it was just such a fascinating tale. And I'm like, somebody's got to make a movie about this or at least write a book or a documentary, something. And finally, there has been a documentary called um, Lost Soul, The Doomed Journey of Richard Stanley's The Island of Dr. Moreau. And it was indeed a doomed journey. But it's a really cool documentary because, one, it catches up with Richard Stanley, who has become this, you know, filmic persona non grata, like after this horrific experience working within the studio environment, he largely disappeared from the grid. And uh, the filmmaker has to actually capture uh, him in, or catch up with him in the, the mountains of France where he lives. And he's this total crazy character. Uh, you know, he, he says his mother was a witch, so he also dabbles in and, uh, you know, contacts witches to help things go in his favor when he wants to, or shaman in, in, uh, in England. Uh, to kind of help cast spells for him, that that kind of stuff. And he's a really, really fascinating guy. Uh, I had first encountered him with his, like the rest of the world, with his first feature, uh, Hardware, which later came under fire for uh, ripping off a story from 2080 magazine, which was kind of settled behind the scenes. But either way, it's a really cool flick, uh, you know, killer robot kind of flick. And then later on, he had released Dust Devil, which is a real, really interesting indie flick as well. And, uh, it was one of those things where the Hollywood machine recognized the talent and said, well, this guy's a great, interesting, visionary filmmaker. We want to capture him, make him make films for us, and not let him do what he's good at. <laughs> and uh, one of the things he really wanted to do was uh, do an adaptation of the, the Well story. It's something that he, in the in this film, he uh, mentions that it was in his parents' book collection. It was like a brightly colored spine, so it was like that kind of forbidden fruit. He was told he was too young to read it at first, so he had to read it. And uh, was fascinated with this tale of, you know, of, of science and morality and, and, and whatnot, and decided he was going to adapt it. And uh, it was going to be a pretty you know, decent-sized uh, budget, but it, it kept getting bigger and bigger. You know, people like uh, Bruce Willis were getting involved and, you know, major names. And the, the more people were getting excited about it, the, the bigger the budget was getting, and it was it ended up hurting the film in the long run. Uh, there's a lot of great interviews within this documentary. Feruza Balk was great to capture um, because she her story is pretty uh, fascinating and, and one of the more interesting tales uh, in the making of the film. They actually got Rob Morrow, too, who was originally going to play the, the main character, Prendick, and uh, Val Kilmer, of course, and Marlon Brando are not to be seen. Neither is a Michael DeLuca, the uh, New Line executive and, and well, creative the director that was largely, you know, part of some of the problems, uh, you know, with this film. And uh, but they did get Bob Shea uh, from New Line Cinema uh, to, you know, you know, kind of openly and Ed Edward Pressman, the, the producer, to kind of uh, candidly discuss a lot of the, the information of this film. And you think a lot of people would be embarrassed about it. Feruza Balk even is kind of like twitchy in some scenes where she's like, oh, it's, you know, it's a part of her filmography that she'd rather forget. Uh, but yeah, it's the tale of this, uh, and I think it's a UN worker in this film, this castaway who's uh, kind of looking into this mysterious disappearance of this scientist. And he's, you know, a traditional mad scientist. And he's found this... Uh, you know, fitting that, you know, Marlon Brando plays him because he's found this kind of like Colonel Kurtz-esque uh, lifestyle. Uh, and in fact, it gets into how uh, uh, Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness was uh, kind of like a ripoff of the original uh, Island story. And it's really fascinating into how that ties in with the history of Richard Stanley. 
um, because the character that uh, Kurtz was based on was apparently also based on Richard Stanley's great grandfather or whatever, like an adventurer. And uh, so, yeah, that's some really bizarre, like personal connections with this film. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so there's this, you know, mad scientist who is, you know, splicing humans and, and animals and, and combining their DNA and creating these monstrous atrocities and trying to, uh, trying to cultivate them and, and to uh, teach them. And he's got a couple, you know, sons and, and a daughter that are near and dear to him and, and trying to guide them into overcoming their animal nature. And then uh, Val Kilmer plays, you know, Montgomery, the, the, the kind of, you know, zookeeper on the island, the one who goes out and gives them their shots and, and knows too much and is, you know, kind of driven mad in a way by that. Um, but originally it had you know, a totally different cast and things started to fall through and Rob Morrow eventually was replaced by um, David Thewlis. And that's the one thing I was very disappointed in in this film is uh, that David Thewlis was not involved in it, nor was his name ever mentioned once. He, there's footage of him in the final finished film uh in the film but his name is never mentioned once and it's too bad because that is actually one of the fascinating sagas is that uh richard stanley intended the character that david thulis originally uh you know portrayed uh to be a very british character and that was one of the things the studio was adamant about that he could not cast a british person and in fact he said he would have loved to have cast david thulis after seeing him in films like naked and uh, it was the ultimate irony that after Richard Stanley was booted from the project that they immediately hired David Thewlis, who was someone they would never have let him you know, uh, put in the film. So anyways, Richard Stanley was definitely out of his element and directing a big feature film. And there were so many suits looking down his his uh, you know his back at all moments. And uh, he you know did some scouting and, and was a little bit neurotic and, and would disappear from the set. And uh, one of the uh, possibly apocryphal stories was that he climbed up a tree because he just couldn't deal with the pressures of making the film. And eventually they went down to um, shoot the film in, in Australia and, and this area, which you later found out is like the, you know, the worst area possible in terms of weather and uh, started working on the film and just couldn't get anything going on. Part of the problem was Val Kilmer. You know, he was one of those characters that, you know, wouldn't show up and didn't want to do what he wanted. And he was very aggressive with all the other cast and told them that he was the star and he gets his way and uh, talked back openly to Richard Stanley and let him know that, you know, he wasn't there to be directed. Very similar to Kevin Smith's uh, trials and tribulations with, um, uh, with Bruce Willis on Cop Out, if you've ever seen Kevin Smith's, uh, you know, kind of spoken word pieces, he goes at length about that in one of them. Uh, so, so everybody was in California looking at the dailies and checking out this this project, and they they quickly decided that it was time to pull the trigger on Richard Stanley as a director, and then uh, John Frankenheimer came in, and there was the, like these alliances between the cast and Richard Stanley, he disappeared and was told to go get on a plane and go back to Hollywood. Never got on the plane. Nobody knew where he was. Colonel Kurtz, like he went up a river and like hung out on a plantation and was found later. And it just keeps getting more and more fascinating. All the kind of beast people where they got a lot of uh, locals to play the beast people. And um, they started living this, this real Bacchanal lifestyle, much like their characters they were going to play because there was, a whole lot of hurry up and wait going on. And then you know, there was rain delays and it was just basically them sitting around in hotel rooms, getting high and having sex and blowing their per diem on crazy things like, you know, race car sets and stuff like that. And, uh, totally fascinating. And nobody really had a, a lock on the story or where it was going. So meanwhile, Richard Stanley, uh, got in contact with some people that were, um, working on the film and snuck back onto the set of the film and, conned the uh makeup director to um and it has some great uh, makeup effects in the finished version from stan winston but he got one of the makeup guys to actually give him a dog face uh outfit and he actually still has the latex suit that which kind of proves the story uh he snuck on as this dog face back back character and it's even got um interviews with the um the frankenheimer crew and one of the i think it was like second director second unit director who kept saying uh, that this one guy would never take his mask off on the set and uh, you know, was given great performances, but and he had spoken a different accent than everyone else, and he knew something was fishy. And eventually the word came out that Richard Stanley was on the set of the film, and everybody thought he was going to blow up the set. <laughs> so it got crazy. 
Fruza Balk pretty much uh, convinced a, a member of the crew to take her to the airport so she could escape, and she was pretty much dragged back kicking and screaming, and they told her, you know, she pretty much they owned her and they could ruin her career so she couldn't leave the film. Uh, just total madness, it's, and that's just scratching the sur surface. So many great stories in here, uh, especially the uh, the South American star who, you know, got drafted to play the kind of diminutive clone sidekick of Dr. Moreau and that's been spoofed on South Park, etc. And how Marlon Brando fell in love with that actor and, and decided to make him the centerpiece of many of the scenes, thereby um, you know, negating another actor's input into the film and just how you know Brando was just making stuff up as he went. Val Kilmer was a total a-hole to everybody. So yeah, it's, it's a crazy, crazy film, and it's a great, um, it's a great look into... Uh, the studio process and how things can go wrong. So it's up there with uh, Lost in La Mancha, the Terry Gilliam failed making of The Man Who Killed Don Quixote, and of course Hearts of Darkness, the great uh, making of Apocalypse Now in there. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's up there in terms of really fascinating movie making gone, gone horribly wrong. And uh, yeah, definitely recommend checking it out. It's out there on a couple different platforms and you can stream it. Uh, I don't think it's streaming free anywhere, but uh, you can at least rent it and check it out. But uh Looking forward to seeing some more Richard Stanley. Apparently he's dabbling in filmmaking again, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to do next. And uh, hopefully he doesn't put a hex on me or anything like that in the meantime. Uh, yeah, definitely check it out. It's one of my favorite stories of the Hollywood machine uh, of all time, and I'm glad somebody finally got around to making a documentary out of it, even if David Thewlis wasn't involved. I'm sure he's probably trying to look in the other direction and <laughs> not think about this film at all. Uh, I also have the, the finished version and the director's cut on Laserdisc because yeah, I've got a soft spot for it, even though it's a uh, total hot mess. But yes, check it out. Lost Soul, The Doom Journey of Richard Stanley's at the Island of Dr. Moreau. Cheers. <laughs>